In February 1862, U.S. forces captured Nashville, Tennessee, following the decisive battles at Fort Henry and Fort Donaldson. To defend the city, the U.S. military erected a number of fortifications around the city, including a star-shaped fort atop St. Cloud Hill on the southern side of the city. While much of the Battle of Nashville of December 1864 submerged on urban development, Fort Nagley remains a sentinel of that battle. However, the fort has faced serious threats from various developments, but in recent years finally received some attention from preservation groups. Construction of Fort Nickley started shortly after the U.S. occupation of Nashville. Captain James Sinclair Morton oversaw the construction of the limestone star-shaped fort. The fort required 62,500 cubic feet of stone, as well as 18,000 cubic feet of earth, to level the interior terraces. The project became the largest inland stone fortification built during the rebellion. Since the construction required a significant labor force, the U.S. commander recruited over 2,700 slaves and free people. The living conditions faced by these laborers were atrocious, and an estimated 800 died working or living near Fort Nagley. Once complete, the fort was to defend against rebel attacks, with a significant portion of its garrison constituted by U.S. colored troops. For the most part, the fort and its garrison remained idle. The fort was a partial star fort, with eastern and western parapets in star form for a concentrated crossbar. At the southern end of the fort, facing enemy territory, were two massive bomb-proof bastions, equipped with guns which could be aimed in several directions. Each bastion had tunnels which protected man moving through the works. In case of an attack, the stonework was protected by dirt placed in front of the stone foundations. At the center of the fort was a 12-foot high stockade built of cedar posts with turrets, a final defensive position in case the fort was overrun. In total, Fort Nagley housed 11 cannons and 75 men. Following his defeat at the Battle of Atlanta, Rebel General John Bell Hood decided to take the war into Tennessee and forced General William Tecumseh Sherman to withdraw from Georgia. After fighting at Franklin, which General John Schofield had made extremely costly for the rebels, including the deaths of a significant number of brigade and division commanders, Hood advanced on Nashville, where he tried to besiege the enemy. Fort Nagley was only marginally involved in the fighting, as a staging area for some of the fighting further to the south. After the war, the U.S. military abandoned the fort in 1867, and it slowly fell into ruin and woods encroach on the fort submerging it. The city purchased the property in 1928. During the New Deal period, the Works Progress Administration arrived at Fort Nagel to restore the military outposts, but also they did significant new damage in their restoration efforts. In 1936, the WPA employed 800 men in the reconstruction project 
that cost $84,000. Sadly, vandalism and crime came to the area after World War II, with the fort once more turning into a force for the lack of civic attention. In the 1960s, the fort was closed to the public. The region to the southeast of the fort soon turned into a municipal park, with sports fields including baseball and softball. Eventually, Herschel Greer Stadium came directly next to the fort with a minor league baseball team. On the north side of the fort, the National Children's Museum appeared. The museum has morphed into the Cumberland Science Museum, with a new building on the northwestern slope of the fort. As long as access was restricted, visitors to the stadium and museum had no idea what was hiding in the trees above. After years of work by local preservation groups to locate sufficient funds for a restoration project, they were successful and they could open Fort Negley for the first time in decades. There was much promise that a restoration project could generate economic benefits. The restoration was not about bringing back what had existed in the mid-1860s, and is a mixture of both the original Ford as well as what WPA restoration work had done. The group has removed a number of trees to allow for better visualization of the Ford and its ruins. On December 10, 2004, the gates to the Ford opened again. In addition, the city allocated a million dollars for a new visitor center. When the visitor center with its museum, film, and research center opened on December 15, 2007, reenactors from the U.S. Color Troops participated in the opening ceremony. The Fort Restoration brought slow progress to the area. Greer Stadium had been unused since 2015, and in 2017, a redevelopment plan for the area was proposed by a developer. The plan called for an education space and interpretive trails, as well as additional preservation and restoration of sight lines to the fort. The plan also called for the redevelopment of the area adjacent to Career Stadium, with music and art space, a community center, open park space, retail space, and affordable housing. The entire eastern and southeastern flank of the fort, as well as Career Stadium, would have been built over as part of the plan. The plan came to nothing with the developer abandoning the idea in January 2018, when archaeological excavation near the stadium and fort revealed evidence of a cemetery of the enslaved who had built Fort Neckley. While the survey had used modern technology and some digging, no bodies were actually located, but there was enough evidence presented to the mayor's office to call off the development. Today, the preservation efforts in keeping the memory of the Battle of Nashville alive falls heavily on the shoulders of the Battle of Nashville Trust and the Friends of Fort Nagley. The Battle of Nashville Trust, initially formed in 1992 as the Battle of Nashville Preservation Society in an effort to protect the few remaining sites of the Battle of Nashville threatened by urban development. The organization preserved a number of small Wharf's Rebellion-related properties around the city. They do not own Fort Neckley, but work closely with the city. Since 2019, the City of Nashville, Battle of Nashville Trust, and the Friends of Fort Neckley are engaged in the new master planning. The new master plan, being considered currently, does not include private development, and it will be a park space, as well as probably some additional memorials and interpreters' trails. It is nice to see Fort Negley finally getting some attention and the story of African Americans and USCT forces being told. Thank you for watching this episode of the War of the Rebellion channel. If you liked the material covered, please like and subscribe to the channel. Hit the notification bell for new episodes. If there's a story of the War of the Rebellion you would like covered, Please leave a comment. Use the comments to engage in conversations. Thank you for patronizing the War of the Rebellion channel.